We'll be learning about the drugs used in dyslipidemia. So the first ones we are looking at are the statins, right? So the mechanism of action is mainly they inhibit HMG CoA reductase, which is a very very important enzyme in the synthesis of cholesterol. Right? It is a rate limiting step for the synthesis of cholesterol. So whenever you inhibit this enzyme, obviously there is a anti dyslipidemic effect. Right? It also increases the number of LDL receptors. So cholesterol is taken away from the blood by these receptors. So the serum cholesterol reduces right that is how the statins act now let's look at the names of these statins these are atorvastatin rosuvastatin pravastatin simvastatin fluvastatin serivastatin and pitavastatin now there are a few non anti dyslipidemic drugs which also end with statin so don't get confused with these names these are selastatin pentostatin and somatostatin these are not anti dyslipidemic drugs okay now a few important points about statins statins have maximum ldl cholesterol lowering potential right please remember this point but they are given late at night but the only drugs which can be given during any time of the day are atorvastatin and rosuvastatin because they are long acting their action will last for almost the entire day so you can give it at any time of the day now, what are the adverse effects these are myopathy so and myopathy the risk is uh, more in case of whenever you're giving fibrates as compared to statins right and the other side effect is hepatotoxicity and also they cause an increase in the diabetes mellitus of the patient now what are the pleiotropic effects these are the beneficial effects of statins they cause plaque stabilization endothelial dysfunction and uh, they reduce the inflammation they reduce oxidative stress and they also reduce the thrombosis in patients these are the good effects of statins right so let's look at a few special points about a few important statins simvastatin and lovastatin these are pro drugs right and they have maximum cns penetration so they are converted into the active form after the uh, drug has been consumed rosuvastatin is the longest acting drug right and pravastatin has negligible metabolism by cyp3a4 enzyme right so there is a risk of myopathy so the risk of myopathy is very less right it also interacts in minimal amounts with the meals so because it is not getting metabolized too much in the body the risk of myopathy is less now all these points are important exam questions for you okay now intestinal cholesterol absorption inhibitor that is azetamide it inhibits NPL1C1 that is Neiman pick like 1C1 in the intestine thereby inhibiting the in, uh, absorption of cholesterol okay there is upregulation of HMG CoA reductase in the liver so the liver will start synthesizing more cholesterol this is the adverse effect of azetamide now HMG CoA reductase we have seen that it needs to be inhibited right so that the cholesterol levels reduce but azetamide it causes upregulation so you should always combine azetamide with statins right to prevent tolerance of the drug. Now let's proceed to the next class of drugs that is fibrates these include clofibrate, phenofibrate, bisafibrate and gemfibrosil okay they act by PPAR alpha stimulation and they increase the lipoprotein lipase thereby reducing the triglyceride level fibrates please remember important point they have the maximum lowering potential for triglycerides okay fibrates triglycerides always remember that now the next class of drugs we're looking at are babas these are bile acid binding agents these include cholesteramine and cholesterol and cholecevalam now what is their mechanism of action we know the what is enterohepatic circulation the bile acid carries substances from the gut and releases into the blood from where it is reabsorbed again this whole thing we are calling it as enterohepatic circulation right so this uh, bile acid binding agents they interrupt this enterohepatic cycle and cause excretion of the bile acid right so these are the drug of choice in children and pregnancy because they are safe drugs cholesteramine and cholesterol are not easily palatable so cholesterolam can be taken orally so the bile acid binding agent that can be given orally is cholesterolam 
Now let's proceed to niacin. It has maximum HDL cholesterol increasing potential. Now we know that HDL is highly desirable lipid, right? So it needs to be increased. And niacin is the only drug that decreases lipoprotein A in the body, okay? It is least expensive, it is cheap, but it has a few compliance limiting adverse effects. The main ones are flushing and itching, mainly due to the release of prostaglandin D2. This can be prevented by aspirin or lorapiprant. Now, what is this mechanism of action? See, PGD2 is inhibited by aspirin or lorapiprant, which can be given orally. These are prostaglandin antagonistic drugs and specially indicated for niacin-induced flushing or itching because they act by blocking the action of prostaglandin D2. And what are the other side effects of niacin? These include hyperuricemia, hepatotoxicity and insulin resistance. Okay. Now the next type of drugs are the newer drugs. These are PSCK9 that is pre-protein converting subtilisin kexin type 9 inhibitors. Okay. PCSK9 binds to the LDL receptors and takes it to the lysosomes that results in the breakdown of these LDL receptors. Thus PCSK9 inhibitors prevent the breakdown of LDL receptors. Now, we know that we need more LDL receptors so that they can take away this um, lipid from the bloodstream, right? So, because PCSK mainly causes breakdown of LDL receptors, we have to give PCSK9 inhibitors. So, when more LDL receptors are present, they can take up the LDL cholesterol from the blood. So, we can use these drugs as hypolipidemic drugs. What are these? And these are inclisiran, it is a small molecule inhibitor of RNA and monoclonal antibody against PCSK9, these are alirosumab and evulosumab, okay. The second type of newer drugs are microsomal triglyceride transport protein inhibitors. Now triglycerides are packed in VLDL by this microsomal triglyceride transport protein. So the drug which inhibits this mechanism is Lomitapide. Okay. The third type of drugs are mypomarsin. So, what are these? These are antisense oligonucleotides against ApoB100. So, they decrease ApoB100 containing lipids in the body. And the last type of drugs are cholesterol ester triglyceride transport protein inhibitors, CETP inhibitors. Normally, LDL cholesterol is deposited in the tissues. HDL will take up the cholesterol and bring it back to the liver. This is known as reverse cholesterol transport. We know this process, right? So, VLDL and LDL try to exchange cholesterol ester of HDL with triglyceride that is present in it. So, this exchange is done by CETP. So, all the CETP inhibitors will increase HDL cholesterol and reduce VLDL or LDL cholesterol. So, what is this drug? This is anacetrapib. okay? So, this was about anti-dyslipidemic drugs.